My name is Alana Navarrete and today is January 25th, 2024. Um, I've been watching this YouTube Originals TV show called Impulse um, that came out in 2018 um, and it's directed by Doug Lyman who's known for movies like Swingers and Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow. Um, at the end of every episode, there's an advertisement um, for something called uh, RAIN, R-A-I-N-N, -N, uh, which stands for Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. Um, uh, it's something that's really resonated with me uh, whenever I see that. Um, and I thought I'd share some of my own stories uh, in a little more detail, uh, my experiences um, in that kind of aspect. Uh, personally, when I was younger, I, I think it was probably before I was five years old, um, one of my paternal cousins tried to molest me, um, and I never spoke with my parents about it. Uh, I know that up until pretty much the entire time that I uh, lived at home, which I want to say I lived at home until I was about 20 or so, um, through college. Uh, you know, a lot of times I would sleep, uh, with my hand, like covering my vagina, uh, at night. Um, sometimes just uh, like over my pants or over the top of my underwear. And sometimes just even, uh, uh, like in my underwear too, uh, like shielding it. Cause I remember, um, from that experience, uh, with my cousin, that that was something I did uh, when he kind of like tried to come at me. Um, so that stayed with me a long time. I never, uh, I, I also do remember that uh, my mother never asked me about why I slept with my hand like that. Um, but that oftentimes I would wake up, uh, like I would feel her like pulling my hand out of my pants. Um, she probably didn't know what I was doing, didn't think to ask. Um, but. Uh, but that stuck with me a long time, and I noticed certain times, uh, even as a matter of habit, uh, especially a lot of times when I'm watching this show, I'll kind of um, find myself uh, doing that same gesture, just kind of protecting that area between my legs. Um, then uh, sometime during grade school, I think it was probably when I was around eight years old or so, um, there was a classmate of nine, mine, uh, her name was Cheryl Schmager. Um, her and uh, another friend of ours, uh, she would kind of like try to direct these, um, uh, these movies in a camper. It was, I don't even know, it was somewhere wherever she lived. Um, she was kind of like white trashy. And she would tell like me to, uh, to mime like as if I was making out with Jenny and like hover above her and it, I didn't, I, Jenny and I never um, thought twice about it. Um, it was just such an odd experience. I was trying to recall if at that time uh, I probably would, you know, sneak watching um, like Cinemax at night kind of episodes, that type of thing. Uh, so it, to me, I, it felt like, oh, we're just like play pretending something that I've seen on TV, but didn't. When, I mean, as a probably eight year old at the time, wouldn't have thought of how to process that um, then. And um, I I didn't date in high school or college. Um, wasn't trying to be sexually active or really like pursue boys um, at that time. And it wasn't until I was twenty one years old um, that I lost my virginity. And it was actually with a uh, like technically an ex coworker uh, named Ricky Robles. Um, I realized that he, at that time in his life, I think he had somewhat recently been let go from WIA, uh, the company that we both had worked for, um, and then ha also had a, his like engagement um, was broken off. So uh, being a 21-year-old, I think he was about 9 or 10 years older than I, um, certainly didn't have any experience at that time of, you know, recognizing troublesome symptoms. Um, but I, it, it's taken a lot of time in retrospect to realize, you know, back then I truly believe he did manipulate me into getting something that he wanted. He didn't know um, offhand that I was a virgin until the very first night um, where we went dancing. Uh, and even looking back at that evening, I do believe that he manipulated it into getting me alone to go out dancing with him. I thought it was... Um, 
some kind of like group thing. I know that he had been let go and I uh, was honestly feeling kind of sorry for him. And I thought it would sound fun uh, to go to an 80s night dancing. Um, and then when I showed up, it was just him and I. I was definitely very surprised by that. And um, and that night after drinking and dancing, which uh, I also didn't drink regularly um, when I turned 21, like I never drank alcohol until after I turned 21. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I remember those experiences with Ricky and uh, it was, I want to say maybe several months until I actually lost my virginity to him. Um, he, and I remember it being so anticlimactic in the sense that once we finally did sleep together, he said that I was like the fourth person whose virginity he had taken, something like that, which, um, which made it feel even less special. But, um, I know now looking back that he was, uh, taking some kind of, uh, I don't know if it's like like stimulants or drugs um the time that we were together um not exclusively just I thought we were friends having fun um and and definitely uh felt very betrayed um from my experiences with him and um and so that's all when I was living in Los Angeles um or like in Southern California um Another, uh, I'm just trying to remember in the state succinct, um, we'll fast forward to, uh, 2018. I actually met someone who was, uh, pretty similar, uh, who had reminded me of that first experience and again, not having the kind of foresight to, um, to recognize similar symptoms, but I met someone named Kevin Kelleher. Um, we, uh, we slept together and, um, and I, there's no one else that I've felt more sexually abused by than by him. He would do things like, uh, spit in my mouth, um, which I, I told him I didn't like, like continuously and he never listened. Um, he made me do other sexual things that, uh, that I didn't, I just really didn't want to do. And, um, he tried, uh, semi-successfully having sex with me, um, without a condom on, um, which was very, very worrisome considering, uh, while we we're seeing each other in a short three month period, um, while I wasn't sleeping with anyone else, I know he was, he was very open about talking about his experiences, um, with other partners and the fact that he would try something like that, um, with me just shows a complete uh lack of care for my own health um something that uh i experienced also with him was um he i mean he would try to have sex with me so roughly i think he thought it was a, a good experience um on multiple occasions to the point where he actually made me ble like bleed and i looked into this a lot I processed a lot of this in 2018. Um, so might wonder why I wouldn't be more emotional making this video. It's because I've been through these emotions since 2018. Um, I was very sad, very angry for a long time and feel like I've been saying the same thing for like six years. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm convinced that he even caused problems with my menstrual cycles back then. Um, and, I like an image that's been haunting me is even the scene uh, afterwards, sometimes like the uh, the bed that I had back then. I mean, he did it so roughly to a degree where uh, like there would be blood all on the mattress afterwards. And it was ri like absolutely ridiculous me even trying to clean that up. I remember it left permanent stains on the mattress. Um, and I'd have to wa like wash everything, strip the bed. Um, it it was definitely not a romantic experience uh, when he would do things like that. Um, and I know also similarly with him, uh, every single time we met up, he was either high on something or drunk. Um, and uh, you know, people maybe don't realize that uh, you don't realize things when they're happening in the moment. And it, does take a lot of retrospect and um, the luxury of time to really reflect on the full impact that people have had on you. So those are just some of my own um, experiences that I wanted to share here and include some of this information uh, today.